from Radiolab. It's like a low-stakes Y2K. A story about folks that don't exist and the computers that delete them. Null from Radiolab. Listen wherever you get podcasts. Listener supported. WNYC Studios. This is All of It on WNYC. I'm Allison Stewart. We're always excited to learn about a new local musician. And today, that artist is Michelle Willis, a vocalist and keyboardist who moved to New York City in 2016 from Toronto. She has been a touring member of David Crosby's Lighthouse and Sky Trail bands, and she co-wrote many of the songs on Crosby's collaborative 2018 album, Here If You Listen. Here's what Cros himself had to say about her. She's probably one of the best singers I've ever heard in my life. Of all, ever, anybody. One of the very best, one of the top handful. I'm talking about I live in the same world with Joni and Aretha and Bonnie and women who can sing. She's in that lake. She's that good. And now you can hear for yourself. Here's a song you can immediately add to your Spring Jams playlist titled Green Gray. It's silly to say, maybe you make everyone feel this way I'm telling my heart, this ain't no place for love to start Ever since I met you, color's been creeping in Flirting in shadow, paint a light on an old tin Every line you draw, I bend. Every glance you give, I linger. Gray shades waiting on your beckoning. Ooh, ever since I met you, I've been holding out to brush against you. But you got someone at home. It's silly to say, maybe you make everyone feel this way. I'm telling my heart, this ain't no place for love to start. It's silly to say, maybe you make everyone. Green Gray is off Willis' sophomore album, Just One Voice. Other voices joining her on the record include veteran singers like, yes, David Crosby and also Michael McDonald. A few peers lend their vocals as well. Becca Stevens, Taylor Ashton, and Lake Street Dives, Rachel Price. Michelle Willis joins me now for an All of It listening party. Michelle, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Your first album came out the same year you moved from Toronto to New York City. What brought you here? What changed for you moving to NYC? Um, I had I had kept coming here and falling more and more in love with the city. And also, uh, I feel like I really needed to learn how to be more direct. And that was something that New York had in abundance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but really, I just, I love the city. And I, I had grown up playing music in Toronto and um, I was about to turn 30 and I wanted to experience what it was like to move to a place where you, you know, you had no foundation and you just had to restart and regrow. And I was lucky enough to have some musicians that I knew here, but um, it's obviously an amazing city for music. So it made sense. How did the move to New York inspire parts of your album, Just One Voice? Moving... You know, well, the experience that I was looking for uh, was a lot of it. It ended up being a lot of anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out, uh, yeah, it just, I, I lost all the foundation that I had and I, I felt like I needed to regrow all of that. And also I was touring so much. Um, I was never really home for longer than a week, sometimes a day at a time. Um, within six months, uh, Cross started, I started playing in one band with him and then he started another band and Becca Stevens, I play in her band as well. And it was just nonstop between, um, touring and records. So, uh, I had no foundation and, and I think a lot of this music leading up to moving and written after moving as well was written from just trying to find that. I think these songs exist as places where I was, trying to work through some of the the 
really lost and um, confused and anxious feelings and and let them live in a safe and compassionate place, <laughs> if that makes sense. It does. My guest is Michelle Willis. The name of the album is Just One Voice. This is a listening party. So let's listen to the track Liberty and we can talk more about it on the other side. It's a good thing to be here Waiting, finding on my own Cause you can make yourself a new anywhere And then you find you're the one you can't let go from her album Just One Voice. Who else do we hear there? That is, uh, yeah, there's Michael McDonald is singing background vocals on that song. Oh, that. <laughs> oh, him. Uh, yeah, the sweetest, most soulful, beautiful voice uh, of all time. Yeah, he's there. Uh, yeah, that song I wrote, I can remember you know, in, in such cliche fashion, I guess, but I, I was literally walking across the Brooklyn bridge, hmm. um, and, uh, thinking about, you know, it was the, it was the trip that I was here, um, right before I moved. And I was just thinking about what happens when you move and you think that you're going to have this clean slate, but actually you just bring all your baggage with you. And, and there's all sorts of like new problems that are going to arise <laughs> in a new place too. And, and thinking of all of the people who, specifically have moved to New York, um, that everything, nothing is ever as it seems when you, when you arrive in a new place. He brought you with you, as I said. He brought me with me, yeah. <laughs> no, fortunately. Let's listen to uh, another song, Janet, which originally appeared on Here If You Listen, the collaborative album you made with, with Crosby and Becca Stevens and Michael League. Um, why did you decide to record it for Just One Voice as well? I just wanted to do it my own way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I had always written it. Uh, I, I never actually thought that it would be on the on the Crosby record because it just seemed so far out of the wheelhouse that we were writing in. And um, to Becca's credit, she was the one who who said, "Didn't can you just play them that demo that you played for me the other night?" Um, and that's how it ended up on that record. And we took the approach on in that version as a more acoustic quartet version. Um, and I wanted to, I always heard it as like a Stevie, a Stevie Wonder type thing um, where we could really get a little greasier on the bridge and, and just way too many keyboard synths things layered on top of each other. So yeah, I just wanted to try it in that, in that way. Well, let's check it out. This is Janet from Michelle Willis. Oh, it's an ugly thing Janet, Janet Those wounds that you carry in you Tugging at your own skin And Janet's gonna eat you up You're pouring your sweet love Into a bitter cup And don't you remember You let them go you said goodbye and now you're crying while somebody takes him home So what you gonna do with it, Janet? What you gonna do with it? What you gonna do with it, Janet? What you gonna do with it? Oh, time, and I know that you've 
My guest is Michelle Willis. We're talking about her new album, Just One Voice. Okay, so a tweet from the album's release day says, eight years of writing, three years making. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when did the recording process actually begin? Oh, God. I tried so hard to forget. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> it, it, yeah, it was a long process. I actually set out initially to make two records, which I did. Um, and the first idea... Um, the catalyst for this was was uh, holding on to these live recordings that I had made in 2016 mm-hmm. at the release show for my first record, See Us Through. Um, we recorded these two songs for an encore that were How Come and Just One Voice that made it onto this record. And they were so cathartic. They felt, I, I just knew that they, it was good. I just, I, and... I carried them around for years, um, but not doing anything with them, and 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 being so busy that I just didn't have the energy or the really confidence at a certain point to approach them. But I just I knew I had to do something. So that hearing those live versions, I was like, "There's something lost when you record in studio that doesn't have that live energy, and there's also something lost." Um, in, in the live thing where you can't go into this exploratory sandbox, um, you can only do that really in a studio where you can spend hours like, I really want this <laughs> hi-hat sound to have, whatever, you know, like you can just be such a nerd about it. And so I decided that I would make two records of the same songs, one live in a really special um, place, this is a venue in Toronto called 918 Bathurst, and it's a renovated Buddhist temple. And I would play with my band that I grew up playing with or, or spent the last, you know, years before I moved here playing with. And I invited David Crosby to sing as a guest. And it was a super, super special production. And there was like 400 people that came. And uh, that was the live record. And then at the same time, and, and that is partly why it's taken so long, but also there was the pan pan as it has been called that gave us a bit of an interruption um so we did the live record in 2019 and in the midst of that at the beginning of the year i just started working on the studio album as well because i knew that um yeah we had the opportunity to go really deep with these songs that i could direct them in a bit slightly more of a pop direction um without 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 them being pop songs um, but we could have a really rich approach to, excuse me, to the production. So that's what we did. And and I just wanted to see, it was kind of a masochistic way to see, you know, what would reveal the true feeling, like the true kind of cathartic feeling of, of the music. And ultimately they both do, you know, in different ways, but it was clear by the end that the studio record is the record. And um, the live version is what all live recordings are. They're just a really special document, a version of of the, the thing. My guest is Michelle Willis. We're having an all of it listening party for her album, Just One Voice. Let's listen to a bit of the song, How Come? And we can mm-hmm. talk about it on the other side. How come you don't call me anymore? How come, how come, how come, how come? Jesus come in Have you already found someone new to whet your appetite? I hope they're strong and nice for you mm. How come you don't call me anymore? How come, how come, how have I become so it's interesting. This there's a transition around the three minute mark in that song, and it sort of turns into a different track. What inspired that structure? I have no idea. 
Uh, I really don't. I, I've never done anything like that before. Um, I don't know. I, I've listened to a lot of prog stuff. Maybe that was kind of where some of that was coming from or even, I, yeah, I have no idea. Um, and, and even Michael, Michael sings at the end. Michael McDonald. Um, Michael McDonald takes a lead, which uh, is, I still like shake my head laughing, you know, when I hear it, it's uh, such a dream to hear his voice singing those words. Um, but yeah, it takes a twist. And I think it speaks to what I was feeling at the time, which was, you know, this relationship was coming apart. It was actually a friendship. And um, we have so many opinions in that state where we're kind of and, and feelings, you know, we're, we're sort of lost and we're hurt and we're, you know, why is this happening? And you blame yourself, you blame the person. And, and at the end, the song is like, it's just really triumphant. And it's also, you know, like, you're okay. I'm okay. Let's just enjoy our lives. Like, this is it. Just go enjoy yourself. You're fine. And, uh, I think I needed that. I, th I think I needed, I needed to just, feel a little bit powerful and um and also just free of of like trying to figure it out and try to fix it you know it's just like it's fine let's just go dance just go do your thing I'll do my thing you know yeah the name of the album is just one voice it is by Michelle Willis Michelle thank you for sharing your music with us today it's a total pleasure Allison I listen to your program probably every day all right I'll say hi to you every day you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hi, Michelle. <laughs> Behind the voice. Michelle, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Let's go out on the other part of How Come, the part we were just chatting about featuring Michael McDonald. Check it out. of it for today. I'm Allison Stewart. I appreciate you listening and I appreciate you. I will meet you back here next time. From Radio Lab. It's like a low stakes Y2K. A story about folks that don't exist. William, no last name. Is he zero? You know, doctor undefined. And the computers that delete them. Oh my God. The whole screen would go gray. <sighs> It's just an avalanche. And then freeze. Fundamental difference between the way humans process information and the way computers process information. Null from Radiolab. Listen wherever you get podcasts.